Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video we're going to be finding the volume enclosed between a cone and a sphere using polar coordinates and double integration. If you like the video then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado let's go to the whiteboard. We're tasked with finding the volume enclosed between two surfaces. A red surface defined by the equation z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared forming a cone and a blue surface defined by the equation z squared plus x squared plus y squared equals 16 which forms a sphere. Visualizing these surfaces in three dimensions we see the red surface forms a cone which lies above the xy plane and the blue surface forms a sphere half of which lies above the xy plane and half below. Putting both shapes together we get the following. Our first step in calculating the volume enclosed between the two surfaces is to determine the region of intersection shown here and then to convert this region to polar coordinates. To find this region, we need to equate one equation to the other. If we take a look at the equation of the sphere, it's z squared equals 16 minus x squared minus y squared. And it therefore follows that z is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. If we look at the positive square root in graphical form, we see that together with the cone, it's above the xy plane, while the negative square root is below the xy plane. And therefore, for the purpose of this exercise, we'll use the positive square root as the enclosed volume is above the xy plane. So we can now equate the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared to the square root of x squared plus y squared. If we square both sides of the equation, we have 16 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And if we rearrange this, we're left with the equation of the intersecting region, which is x squared plus y squared, which is equal to 8. We can see that this is the equation of a circle with radius 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. To convert this to polar coordinates from Cartesian coordinates, we let x equal r cos theta and y equal r sine theta. Substituting for x and y in our equation, we have r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta is equal to 8. Factoring out r squared from this equation, we're left with r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equal to 8. And using the trig identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we're left with r squared is equal to 8 and taking the positive square root of both sides of the equation we have r is equal to 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. To help visualize I've sketched the region of intersection on the board. As you can see it's a circle with radius 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. Now let's look at what we need to do to find the volume of the enclosed surface. The volume is the double integral over the region r which sums infinitesimally small pieces of area shown here as dA. These are multiplied by a height function f of x, y, and this gives infinitesimally small pieces of volume. Let's take a closer look at what happens when we sum or integrate in the r direction. When we integrate in the r direction, this will represent the inner of the two integrals. This diagram represents a sector of the region capital R. The angle it makes is infinitesimally small, and is denoted by d theta. Within the sector, we have infinitesimally small pieces of area denoted by dA. The size of each area is the length multiplied by the width. So in this case, dR is the height and r d theta the width. So dA is equal to r dr d theta. To find the total area of the sector, we integrate or sum in the r direction.
When we sum or integrate in the r direction, for this exercise, we begin at the origin of the circle, so where r is equal to 0. And we travel to the boundary of the circle, so where r is equal to 2 multiplied by the square root of 2, as we saw when we converted the region of intersection to polar coordinates. If we multiply an infinitesimally small piece of area, dA, by a height function, we get an infinitesimally small piece of volume. So that's the height function f of xy multiplied by r dr d theta, which, as we saw, is an infinitesimally small piece of area. We can now define the limits of integration of the inner integral. The lower limit is the origin of the circle, so that's where r is equal to 0. And the upper limit is where r meets the circle, so where r is equal to 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. I'll deal with the height function f of xy shortly, but let's first find the limits of the outer integral. So that's when r rotates about the angles of theta. To do this, let's first visualize the scenario as r rotates about theta across the region r. As r rotates, it begins at theta equals zero and advances 360 degrees or two pi radians around the circle. Each sector represents an angle of d theta. By summing each of the infinitesimally small sectors, we get our total volume as we multiply the area by a height function. We do this by integrating beginning at theta equals zero and ending at theta equals two pi radians. Now we understand the region as we rotate about theta, we can define the limits of integration of the outer integral. The lower limit starts at theta equals zero, and the upper limit is where theta is equal to two pi radians. Now let's deal with the height component, f of x, y. We have two functions between which we are calculating volume. We need to subtract one function from the other to determine the height component. To facilitate this, we need to assess which of the two is larger when x and y are zero. So which is the top function and which is the bottom function? If we take the function z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and substitute zero for x and y, we're left with z equals zero. And if we take the function z is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared, and substitute 0 for x and y, we are left with z equals 4. So in this case, our top function is z equals the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared, and our bottom function is z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. We can now subtract our bottom function from our top function and convert the resulting function to polar coordinates. So we have the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. To convert this to polar coordinates, we substitute r cos theta for x and r sine theta for y. After making this substitution, we're left with the square root of 16 minus r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta minus the square root of r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Using the trig identity cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, we're left with the square root of 16 minus r squared minus the square root of r squared. Simplifying this further, our height component is the square root of 16 minus r squared minus r. Now that we have our height component, we can begin to evaluate our integrals. So first, we are integrating from r equals 0 to r equals 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. And in brackets, we have the square root of 16 minus r squared minus r and the bracket multiplied by r dr. This will give us a function of theta, which we can then integrate between theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi. Beginning with the inner integral, we can split this into two integrals. The first integral is the square root of 16 minus r squared multiplied by r dr, and the second integral is minus r squared dr. If 
For each of these, we integrate between r is equal to 0 and r is equal to 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. For the first of these, we need to integrate using u substitution. So if we let u equal 16 minus r squared, du by dr is equal to minus 2r and r dr is equal to minus 1 half du. Making the substitution for 16 minus r squared and r dr, we have minus 1 half multiplied by the integral of the square root of u du. Evaluating this integral using the power rule gives minus 1 third u to the power of 3 over 2. Substituting back in for u, we have minus 1 third multiplied by the square root of, and in brackets, 16 minus r squared, which is all raised to the power of 3. We need to evaluate this between 0 and 2 multiplied by the square root of 2. And plugging in the values of 2 root 2 and 0 for r, we have minus 1 third multiplied by the square root of 16 minus 8 cubed minus minus 1 third multiplied by the square root of 16 cubed. And simplifying this gives us 64 minus 16 multiplied by the square root of 2 all divided by 3. And now moving on to the second part of the inner integral, we need to integrate minus r squared dr between the limits of r is equal to 0 and r is equal to 2 root 2. Using the power rule to integrate this, we get minus r cubed divided by 3, which we need to evaluate between 0 and 2 root 2. And plugging the integration limits in for r, we have minus 16 multiplied by the square root of 2 divided by 3 minus 0. And this leaves minus 16 root 2 divided by 3. Combining both parts of the inner integral, we have 64 minus 32 multiplied by the square root of 2, all divided by 3. And now for the outer integral, where we need to integrate this between the limits of theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi. Using the power rule to integrate this, we get theta divided by 3 multiplied into the bracket of 64 minus 32 multiplied by the square root of 2. Evaluating between theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi, we get our final answer of pi divided by 3 multiplied into the bracket of 128 minus 64 multiplied by the square root of 2.